Yeah, please do. Thank you, Prof. Uh, good morning. Uh, today, my CME topic is uh, scapular fracture. Uh, my supervisor is Mr. Khairul Nizam. So, uh, my uh, outline of the content, uh, I'll talk about uh, epidemiology of scapular fracture, etiology, uh, and also a brief anatomy about scapula, and uh, imaging that we do. And then from there, I'll talk about classification system for scapular fracture and uh, treatment options and the latest updates. So uh, basically, scapular fracture represents only 1% uh, of all fractures and 5% uh, of all shoulder girdle fractures uh, of scapula. And it is more common among young males. Uh, the the, the uh, incidence of fracture uh, based on the location in, within the scapula, uh, about 70% of the scapula fracture involve body and spine, and about 15% involves the glenoid process, uh, and 8% involves the acromium, and 7% uh, uh, involves the coracoid process. Uh, about 80 to 90%, uh, almost all scapular fracture uh, result from uh, high energy trauma, especially motor vehicle accident. Uh, the mechanism of injury uh, can be either from the direct force uh, on any region of the scapula or can be indirect force uh, through the impaction of the humeral aid on the glenoid fossa causing fracture uh, in scapula. Okay, then we should uh, always aware of other associated injuries uh, when there's a scapular fracture. Uh, so the orthopedic related or bony fractures uh, can be associated with scapula. Uh, about 52% uh, patient can have rib fracture as well. And they can have uh, ipsilateral clavicle fracture in about 25%. And also a spine fracture about 29%. And they can also have a brachial plexus injury. Uh, they will represent about 5% uh, in the scapular fracture. And the other associated medical injuries uh, we should look for is uh, pneumothorax, about 30% of occurrence, and pulmonary condition, about 41%, head injury, about 34%, and vascular injury, about 11%. So when patient comes in uh, in ED with uh, polytrauma or high energy, uh, when they suspect uh, scapular fracture, we also we must always uh, rule out all these other associated injuries. Okay, uh, a brief anatomy about scapula. It's a triangular flat bone uh, located over the posterior aspect of the ultra on either side, right and left. Uh, it's located on the posterior uh, costal and rib cage, uh, extending from second rib until the seventh rib. And uh, it functions mainly to connect the upper limb to the axioskeleton. And also provides uh, origin attachment for 18 different muscles and also ligaments. And he, it has uh, three borders, three angles, three surfaces, and three joints. So uh, when we look at the scapula, uh, so this will be the, uh, the posterior surface, we call it. And then uh, this, is, this will be the costal surface. And this will be the uh, lateral surface. So that uh, that uh, those are the three surfaces, and then it has a, a medial border, and lateral border, and also superior border. And the medial lateral border connects the and, and forms the inferior angle. The medial and superior border connects and forms the superior angle over the medially, and then the uh, uh, lateral and superior border connects and forms the uh, middle, uh, lateral border. So, okay, that, those are the three borders uh, and angles. And then uh, the three joints are uh, on the glenoid process, articulates with the humeral head laterally okay. and forms the glenohumeral joint. And then uh, we have our acromium. Uh, articulates with the clavicle forming the acromic clavicular joint and uh, the, the, the third joint will be uh, the scapula itself to the uh, posterior aspect of the thoracic uh, 
uh, wall forming the scapular thoracic uh, joint. <coughs> and then we have three processes, uh, namely the acromion process, coracoid process, and also the glenoid fossa. Uh, sorry, glenoid uh, process. Uh, and then a the, uh, brief uh, uh, anatomy of the blood supply to the scapula. Uh, it has a very uh, good anastomosis of uh, blood supply. Uh, it supplies, uh, it has a supply from the uh, first part of the subclavian artery. Uh, branch from thyrocervical trunk will divide into two. Uh, so mainly the suprascapular artery, uh, which supplies the the superior aspect of the scapula and then it further goes downward and anastomosis with the other arteries. And then uh, another branch of from the thyrocervical trunk, the transverse cervical artery, uh, goes around the medial border of the scapula and supplies the uh, muscles and then uh, the medial aspect of the uh, scapula. And then uh, we have uh, another branch coming out from the uh, third part of the uh, subclavian artery or axillary artery. It uh, comes out as a supra subscapular artery, uh, which gives off uh, circumflex scapular artery, which anastomosis with the supra scapular artery. Okay, when we, uh, when we, we encounter a case of scapular fracture in uh, ED, so we have uh, uh, scapular trauma series X ray. Uh, compromise of uh, scapula through AP, scapula Y, and axillary beam. And uh, from the plain radiograph itself, we can diagnose most of the scapular fracture. But uh, sometimes we have uh, difficulty in uh, looking at more complex fractures. So uh, we might need to do uh, proceed with CT scan to look for uh, intra-articular involvement uh, at the glenoid fossa, especially. Mm -hmm. And also a significant displacement, uh, especially when it's a complex uh, scapular fracture, and uh, it will help us to make a uh, decision for operation and also 3D recon uh, to plan for uh, operation. So, the classification for system for scapular fracture divided based on the anatomy of the, <coughs> anatomy of the region of scapulas. So we have this uh, edible classification for glenoid fossa fractures. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the uh, one A uh, involves the anterior rim of glenoid, and one B will be the posterior rim of posterior rim fracture, and then uh, we have uh, two uh, two involve a glenoid uh, fossa fracture. Uh, which the fracture line uh, exit the glenoid fossa to scapula laterally uh, over the lateral border and then we have uh, three uh, it's a glenoid fossa cavity <coughs> fracture uh, where the fracture line exit superiorly and then number uh, four will be a, a glenoid fossa fracture where the fracture line exits the scapula uh, medially and then number five, basically combination of fractures. So number five A will be combination of number two and number four. Number uh, five B will be combination of number three, uh, type three and type four fractures. And uh, type five C will be combination of type two, three and four fractures. And six will be a severe combination of, of the Lenoid uh, fossa itself. Okay, then we have a uh, Ogawa's classification for coracoid process fracture. So it's basically as a uh, two types, type one and type two. Uh, so type one will be the fracture proximal to the. So we have our coracoclavicular ligament, uh, which attaches attach from uh, coracoid process and uh, clavicular. So any fractures uh, proximal to the coracoclavicular ligament will be uh, type 2 and anything proximal will be type 1 fractures. And then we have uh, 
Kern's uh, classification for acromion fracture. So we have uh, three types. So the first type will be the uh, avulsion fracture of the tip of uh, acromion. And then uh, we have uh, type 1B, uh, it's a true fracture but of acromion, but usually undisplaced. And then we have type 2 fracture, uh, it's a displaced fracture, but uh, subacromial space not compromised. And then we have type 3, uh, it's a displaced fracture as well, but uh, the subacromial space will be compromised. So, uh, and this is another type of type 3 fracture, uh, although it's a, it's a radial uh, glenoid neck fracture, but it translated superiorly causing subacromial space compromise. Uh, and then um, AO or, or orthopedic trauma association as, as a very uh, systemic way of uh, systemic way of classification for scapular fracture. Uh, so they divided into three main parts. The first part, part will be the processes, uh, acromion, clavicle, and the spine. So they give a, a label of 14A for this type of fractures. And any fracture involves the body, uh, the, the, the uh, classified as 14B. And any, uh, any fracture involves the glenoid fossa, classified as 14F. So, uh, so first the processes, 14A. Uh, 14A1 will be any fractures involving the coracoid process. Uh, 14A2 will be any fracture involving the acromion process. 14AC will be any fracture involving the spinal fractures. And then moving on to the body, uh, 14B as uh, 14B1 and also 14B2. The differences are uh, 14B1 will be any fracture line, any fractures exit the body at two or less points. So there'll be this one point and then uh, there's a uh, exit point over laterally and also medially. Anything more than that, three or more points. So we have, a, for example, here we have a lateral uh, exit line. For the medial, we have one, two, and also the inferior angle, we have another fracture line exiting. So anything three or more, we uh, label it as 14B2. Uh, okay, and then uh, moving on to the uh, glenoid fossa. Uh, glenoid fossa labeled as 14F. So 14F, we have uh, 14F0. So F 14F0 will be extra articular fracture involving the glenoid uh, or the glenoid neck. Okay, and then we have 14F1. So 14F1 will be uh, simple fractures involving the glenoid. Uh, fossa. So 14F1.1 uh, will be any fracture uh, over the anterior rim of the glenoid cavity. And 14F1.2 will be any fracture involving the posterior rim of the glenoid cavity. And then we have 14.1.3, any fracture uh, could be transverse or short oblique over the glenoid uh, cavity. And then uh, we have uh, 14 F2, uh, which will be the, the, the more, more severe combination form of the glenoid fracture. Uh, so anything, uh, three or more articular fragments, one, two, three, we have three. Uh, anything more, three or more, uh, will be 14 uh, F2.1. Or uh, any central fracture dislocation, uh, we call it as a 14 F2.2. So this uh, this uh, classification basically to to make a standardized way of uh, for communication among surgeons and also uh, for surgical management uh, to make a decision for surgery. So the treatment for scapular fracture can be non-operative or operative. So uh, first line will be uh, non-operative, uh, but majority of scapular fracture about ninety percent. Uh, treated non-operatively, uh, mainly because they are minimally or, or displaced or undisplaced, uh, but uh, and also have acceptable alignment. 
the main reason uh, most of the scapular fracture uh, managed conservatively because of the nature of the scapula where it has uh, very good uh, muscles and uh, muscle attachment and origins ligaments around the scapula uh, making it uh, more uh, very stable although it's fractured so it has a very good prognosis of healing so we will uh, immobilize the arm on arm sling for two weeks and give an adequate anesthesia for the patient and followed by an early range of motion exercise and uh, the, the the rate of uni uh, it can unite uh, at six weeks with a good functional outcome uh, complication associated uh, with scapular fracture managed non-operatively non uh, malunion uh, secondary OA of uh, glenohumeral joint and also glenohumeral pain or instability especially any fracture involved the uh, glenoid rim and patient can have limited range of motion and also scapular thoracic crepitus uh, because any fracture over the body of the scapula uh, unite um, unite irregularly can have uh, some uh, bony uh, uh, irregularity over the uh, scapular thoracic uh, surface uh, joint surface so it can have uh, can cause some crepitus and pain for the patient okay uh, Okay, moving on to operative management so uh, in emergency setting um, <coughs> very rare uh, but any trauma to the scapula uh, if it's open fracture or thoracic penetration uh, to uh, treat it in the emergency setting or uh, scapular thoracic dissociation with vascular injury have to be uh, treated in the emergency setting uh, the others others uh, will be in uh, elective surgery because most of the patient will have uh, polytrauma high energy they have uh, other uh, system injuries so which which have to be addressed first so scapular fracture can be do it in an elective place so before we decide for the operative method uh, there are few indications we should know uh, so mainly they are glenohumeral any 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 scapular fracture causing glenohumeral instability, displaced scapular neck fracture, loss of rotator cuff function, coracoid fracture with displacement of more than one centimeter, and double disruption of superior shoulder uh, suspensory complex. So I'll, I'll go further in detail. Uh, so glenohumeral instability, there are a few things uh, we have to look at the, uh, look into. Uh, first will be medialization or displacement of the uh, fractured fragment more than uh, 10 mm uh, so you see you can see on the CT scan here uh, <coughs> with the axial cut view so you can see the glenoid uh, cavity here so the fractured glenoid is uh, displaced uh, medially or we call it medialization and then we measure the distance so if it's more than uh, 10 mm then there's an indication for uh, surgery and then uh, so we look when we look at the coronal uh, cut uh, we can see the involvement of the glenoid cavity if it's anteriorly involved more than one fourth of the glenoid cavity then the same, that's, that's a, that, that'll be another indication uh, and then if involved more than one third of the glenoid cavity posteriorly sorry sorry for the big error there posteriorly then that there will be another indication and any articular step off more than 5 mm okay that's more than 5 mm articular step off that will be another indication for operative uh, and also unstable glenohumeral articulation uh, so with all this uh, fracture over the glenoid cavity and the glenohumeral joint sublux or dislocated that will be that there will be another indication for uh, operative so these are the indication uh, for glenoid, this this these are the things can cause glenohumeral instability. Thus, is uh, it's uh, advisable to be fixed uh, surgically. Okay, and then uh, looking at the uh, look, uh, so this was the uh, mainly the intraarticular fracture, uh, and then uh, this will be the extraarticular uh, fracture uh, indication for scapular fracture. So uh, any translation 
uh, more than one centimeter. So if we look at the uh, scapular Y view here on the X-ray and also the corona cut on the uh, CT recon, uh, so we can see uh, measure the uh, distance between the uh, fragment here, the body, and also the glenoid. You can you should measure the distance if we anything more than uh, one centimeter of translation need to be fixed surgically. Okay, and then here, uh, the scapular Y view and also the coronal cut. So we measure the angulation of the uh, fracture, the neck between the neck and the body. If it's more than 40 degree uh, of angulation, it need to be fixed. Okay, and then here on the AP view of the scapula, uh, we should uh, measure the glenopolar angle. So uh, angle between the uh, glenoid cavity and also the lateral uh, lateral border of the scapula. So this angle form have to be measured and then anything less than 20 degree have to be fixed. Okay, and then there's another uh, classification system uh, for, for, for shoulder. Uh, we call it as a superior shoulder suspensory complex. Uh, so any, any double disruption to this uh, this uh, superior shoulder suspensory complex or this, this ring uh, have to be fixed. Okay, so what is a, a superior shoulder suspensory complex? It's a bony, or, uh, bony and also soft tissue ring at the end of the superior and inferior bony strut. And it helps, it's mainly to function as, uh, to, uh, to give a stable uh, stability uh, for the uh, scapula uh, and also the axial skeleton and so provides a firm attachment site for several soft tissue and also structures. Okay, so this is, this is the diagram. Okay, so we look at from the, uh, this is the coronal view. So we look here, uh, this uh, ring, uh, this, this, this ring we call it as a uh, superior shoulder suspension complex. Okay. It formed by the distal clavicle superiorly and acromic clavicular joint and ligament and then uh, moving posteriorly, we have acromium here, and we have uh, inferiorly we have glenoid, and uh, moving anteriorly we have coracoid process, and then further up we have coracoclavicular ligament. So these are the uh, soft tissue aspect, the ligaments, and also the bony aspect, distal clavicular, acromium, glenoid, and coracoid forming this ring, and then this ring pulled by two struts superiorly by the clavicle and inferiorly by the uh, spine of scapula or the uh, inferior lateral border of the scapula. So uh, in a simple way, so we look at the uh, simplified diagram here. So this, are the, this is the ring, okay, this is the intact ring. And then whenever there's a double disruption or double break, it need to be fixed. So this double disruption uh, can, be, uh, can be variable. So it can be just uh, torn ligament, two torn ligaments, or it could be just a AC joint disruption or coracoclavicular ligament uh, tear. So torn ligaments have to be fixed. Okay, it could be just a pure bony uh, breakage, or it could be just combination of uh, bone and uh, ligament. So this would be the double disruption we are talking about that need to be fixed uh, surgically. Okay. And then uh, the other uh, indication will be any uh, breakage over the strut as well. Okay, so if there's any breakage of the strut or double break, then you have to be fixed. Okay, and this this uh, uh, the example of uh, this uh, uh, double disruption of the strut is the floating shoulder. So uh, floating shoulder glenoid neck fracture and also clavicle fracture. Uh, we call it. Uh, or known as floating shoulder is one of the indication and falls under this category, double disruption of the superior uh, shoulder suspensory complex. Okay, and the, the most common uh, approach, Judith approach uh, to fix the scapula, uh, it's basically an uh, internervous plane between the infraspinatus muscle and also a terus medium. And the complication associated with operating method, uh, infection, hematoma, shoulder impingement, and also compartment syndrome. But, uh, uh, but on the uh, recent studies, uh, they have 
uh, mentioned that uh, there are drama shoulder fractures uh, being fixed surgically and then uh, very uh, and a very uh, little or insignificant uh, reporting of complication and patient has very good to excellent outcome okay uh, these are my references thank you uh, we, we are stopping for a while for uh, don't want to